I'm Tan Ikram, I'm the Deputy Senior District Judge for England and Wales and I sit at Westminster. I deal with extradition cases. I also deal with something called the Special Jurisdiction of the Chief Magistrate, which are um, sort of highly sensitive cases, in cases involving members of Parliament, that sort of thing. I also deal with terrorism cases, um, which all come to, to, to Westminster as well. And currently I'm also sitting in the Crown Court. I decided whilst I was a legal advisor that um, I could do something on the other side of the bench. So in fact, after I was a legal advisor, I spent some time in private practice. I ended up prosecuting as well. Uh, I'd done everything round the table, as it were, and I think there came a time when I thought, I'd like to make those decisions, and I think I'd be reasonably good at it. Uh, so that's, that's the reason why I applied. I started my career as a trainee court clerk at Slough Magistrates. And uh, I remember the clerk, the justices at the time, couldn't make up her mind whether she wanted to give me the job or not. So she gave two of us the job. Um, I qualified as a legal advisor, or court clerks as we were known then, at Slough, then I went up to Tottenham, then I ended up in Kingston as the principal court clerk. And that's when I decided to go into private practice and I spent a number of years defending and prosecuting. Uh, after that, I applied to become a parking adjudicator. So I was dealing with parking tickets and the appeals around those. Uh, I was dealing with nurses sitting on their disciplinary panel. Um, and I was also hearing other appeals. These were all individual positions I applied for. And in the end, I applied to become a deputy district judge in the magistrate's court. Um, I got that, applied to become a full-time judge, didn't get it. Uh, second time round, I got that. And just to be different, I ended up sitting in Cyprus as well as an associate judge on um, what are called the sovereign basis, which is British Overseas Territory. So I did a stint out there as well, and that's all prior to doing what I'm doing now. I think the two biggest challenges are self-confidence and failure. Not the fear of failure, but actual failure. I think a lot of us think that we're not the sort of people that they want as judges, or they're wrong. Um, if you're up to the job, if you're able to meet their competencies, um, then you are exactly the sort of person they want. The other challenge, I guess, is partly the fear of failure and, and actual failure. Along the way, I've not got jobs I've applied for. And that, that, that can be very difficult, um, picking yourself up having another go. And for some people, um, that fear is too much. Um, but I think we've got to overcome those fears of failure. Some people apply many times. They get there in the end. The appointments process has changed over the years. Um, it's now administered by the JAC. There are roadshows, talks, there are even videos you can watch on the process itself. I think the most daunting part is filling the assessment form. It requires evidence. You can't just make statements, you've got to back it up with actual evidence. Finding that evidence can be a challenge. Filling in the form in the short period that the JAC give you is a challenge. So I think there's a lot of preparation one can do before one applies. Legal advisors have obvious transferable skills. They know their law. It's a good start to be a judge. Um, but of course, the other thing which I think legal advisors have is that brilliant 
amazing ability to deal with people. Um, over our careers as legal advisors, we spend years of our life dealing with lay people, dealing with people with disability, people who don't speak English, ensuring that that court process is fair. And those skills, that awareness is something which is critical to the role of a judge. The single piece of advice I would give is be well prepared. The application process is gruelling. It is intense. That assessment form is going to require evidence. You're going to need to think very carefully about how you fit your experiences, your skills, round their competences. And some think wrongly that their experiences don't really match the way they seek competences. That's just not right. Yes, legal advisors don't have clients, but you have your lay justices, you have your colleagues, you have the people in front of you. So think very, very carefully about how you're going to uh, complete that assessment because that's going to be central and critical as to whether you get appointed or not.